So I told you before about the Egyptian rope stretching tradition of geometry as illustrated here. So people were using ropes, uh, stretching ropes to for the purposes of measuring and delineating fields in an agricultural context. And that's so it's very practically oriented. Now, today, of course, we think of geometry more in terms of uh, as a deductive science, very abstract and so on. It has theorems, it has proofs. So how can we, uh, how, how did that idea arise if, if geometry started in this very in for the purposes of some of these practical problems, why would anybody get it into their heads to start proving theorems? What good is that going to do if all you care about is how much wheat you're, you're going to have next year? So, well, uh, I'm going to suggest a possible path along which, uh, you know, a line of reasoning that could take you from this uh, rope stretching tradition of the Egyptians to the deductive mathematics of the Greeks, as it were. Of course, we have no historical documentation to speak of uh, that establishes this in any detail so you know it's quite speculative but nevertheless it's very entertaining to consider these kinds of questions so well uh, let's s imagine that we are one of these rope stretchers now a professional uh, rope stretcher uh, that is to say a geometer which is uh, our services are only needed part of the season so we're just sitting and playing around with our uh, with our rope now and here, so uh, we can make a rectangle, for example. It's a very simple construction with uh, with a piece of string or a rope. So why don't you do it uh, for yourself? You know, figure out how to make this this shape. Well, uh, so I made this shape, and now why don't I draw these uh, diagonals? You know, that's simple enough. I just take my piece of string and I just stretch it from one uh, corner to the next. Uh, and you know, I can easily make these diagonals like that. And when I have those. Why don't I make this circle? Isn't that a beautiful uh, shape to draw? Uh, this is easy to draw, this circle that is the circumscribing circle that precisely touches all four corners. That's simple because when I have the two diagonals, I also have the midpoint there, of the exact midpoint of the uh, of the rectangle. So I use that as the center of my my circle and obviously have the diagonal there as the, as the radius of the circle. So that way uh, I can just easily I sketch this circle here with a piece of string that I have pinned down one end of here in, in the midpoint and the other end I just run around the whole shape. So, uh, okay, I drew, I drew this uh, this shape here, okay, fine. So what's so interesting about this shape? I can choose to highlight uh, certain parts of it. I, I choose to focus now on the, uh, the circle here and one of the diagonals of the rectangle, which is also a diameter of the, of the circle, obviously. And if I look at uh, this half of the rectangle over here, it makes now uh, I can uh, look at it as a as a triangle that has the diameter of the circle here is one the the hypotenuse of the triangle, and then I have a right angle over there uh, corresponding to the uh, corner of the rectangle originally. But now I can forget about the rectangle though and just consider this triangle in the abstract. Now I just have a triangle sitting in a circle uh, this in this manner and then I can rotate it even like this to make the the diagonal the, the, the diameter here horizontal. So now you know forgetting that it came from a rectangle originally or I, I can now just view it as this is just a triangle uh inscribed in a circle with the diameter is one of its sides so but uh, of course it has a right angle up there because it came from a uh, from a rectangle originally but uh, also uh that was i started in one particular rectangle but i could have started the other rectangles in many different shapes i could have taken another one done the same trick and i could have gotten maybe this a blue rectangle uh, a triangle here instead of the red one but it too would have a right angle over there because of the it came f also from a rectangle so it also has started with a right angle and the same you know uh, maybe i could end up with this green one for instance if i picked another another uh, rectangle to begin with so altogether i have uh this uh you know i end up with uh, well, maybe you already know the name of this famous theorem, in fact, the so-called Thales theorem, uh, as it's called uh, today in school books. So nowadays we announce this as a theorem saying, uh, you know, whenever you raise a triangle upon the, uh, uh, the, the, the diameter of a circle, you know, with uh, an inscribed triangle with, with the, the diameter of circles on one of its uh, sides, then the, uh, the far angle is going to be a right angle. 
so always in fact no matter which which of the all these various triangles you pick so that's uh, a famous theorem of geometry Thales theorem and indeed you know maybe so the Greek tradition has it that Thales was the father of uh, deductive geometry so to speak is the first to to uh, employ deductive reasoning in geometry so not just uh, be able to construct squares and such which is practically useful but also to actually prove stuff like prove that whenever I make one of these kinds of uh, triangles there's always a right angle over there this was supposedly one of the theorems that he proved that's why it's called Thales theorem and we have no written record but the later uh, tradition has it that this is what happened so that was 600 BC so uh, uh, so, so to the best of our knowledge this was uh, then in other words this theorem by Thales was uh, one of the very first uh, perhaps the first theorem to be uh, deductively demonstrated in the history of mathematics um, to be given a proper geometrical proof this was maybe the first theorem and like I tried to indicate with my uh, uh, the with the previous steps here uh, it's not very far-fetched to arrive at the idea of this theorem by starting with just having your piece of string toying around a little and before you know it you start thinking in these kinds of in these kinds of uh, you know the idea of well th th uh, this could be a, a geometrical theorem because uh, we started with not with the aim of discovering a theorem or thinking in terms of of theorems in certain some abstract statement like for all triangles inscribed in the blah 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 you know nothing like that we were just making shapes but uh, by uh, by thinking our construction backwards we could realize that th th this theorem arises in our mind quite naturally because we think, well, we, we hang on, we started with a bunch of rectangles and they all have right angles in them, but at the end here, this construction, I have forgotten about the original rectangle and still I have all these triangles with these right angles. So, is it? Could I in fact always do it, so to speak, backwards? Could I start with the uh, with the triangles here and then sort of uh, c conclude that it's a right angle? as opposed to starting with the right angle uh, rectangle like we did so you know those kinds of uh, th this is one train of thought that could lead you to to the discovery of deductive mathematics so well uh, this guess is as good as any for how deductive mathematics began and uh, it is then uh, a, you know c very suggestive in terms of this Thales theorem being the uh, a theorem that um, history associates with the uh, uh, the invention of deductive mathematics, the concept of deductive mathematics, and furthermore, it is uh, we shall see that the concept of uh, the string constructions that go into this, basically being able to make circles and lines, is uh, obviously a very powerful, a suggestive ingredient also. Greek mathematics generally, the, the Euclidean tradition. So, indeed, th this, uh, you know, how the, the, the origins of geometry in a string construction is uh, a very powerful image that uh, uh, not only suggests how ge geometrical reasoning in the manner of the Greeks, the deductive manner of doing geometry, might have arisen, but also, in fact, uh, is a suggestive theme to keep in mind for the study of Greek geometry generally. So, uh, this is, this is a, a powerful, uh, uh, suggestive story, certainly.